Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, today, uh, uh, I'm uh, really happy to join you for uh, discussing, especially uh, water, food, and energy security all together. I thank uh, Dr. Pachuri and his colleagues at Terry for bringing us together for this timely summit. Sustainable uh, development has been the core business of ADB since its inception in 1966, and it remains our guiding principle in working toward Asia and Pacific free of poverty. The theme of the summit, attaining energy, water, and food security for all, is one of the most complex development issues we have ever faced. Solving this challenge is increasingly critical. This morning, I'll discuss the role of water management as a foundation for achieving food and energy security and look at the interlinkages or nexus between water, food, and energy. As we frequently see in the daily headlines, water security matter far beyond its security uh, sector boundaries. In partnership with the Asian Pacific Water Forum and regional research centers, ADB has developed a practical cross-cutting definition of water security. Quote, societies enjoy water security when they successfully manage their water resources to satisfy household water and sanitation needs, support agriculture, industry, and energy, sustain livable cities, maintain healthy rivers, and protect communities from floods and droughts, end quote. However, ADB's Asian Water Development Outlook 2013 found that 36 out of 48 regional member countries in Asia and the Pacific, including India and China, have poor water security. Some already face imminent water crisis that threaten their food and energy security. Water resource is finite. In many river basins, Constructing new dams or pump stations is no longer an option because water is already fully utilized. Choices have become tougher, the options more limited, and the timing more urgent. The water, food, energy nexus highlights issues around these difficult decisions. River basin managers need to ensure efficient use of water <clears throat> and carefully weigh the trade-offs between uses such as agriculture, industry, and energy production. They must find ways to provide the right amount of water of the right quality where it is best used. For achieving this, improving access to better information, adopting transparent and inclusive decision process, and investing in new technologies are required. Now, I'd like to look at the nexus of water and food security more specifically. Demand for water in Asia is expected to skyrocket over the coming decades. And as 80% of water use is for agriculture, water shortages will lead directly to food shortages. Against this backdrop, we must rea realize that food wasted is also water wasted. Maintaining food security is essential for sustaining economic advances and social stability. The recurrent spikes in food prices since 2008 have been a sharp wake up call. Both water and agricultural land are limited and in many places industrialization and urbanization are reducing availability for agriculture. At the same time, new technologies are creating opportunities for farmers to use water more productively and achieve more crop per drop. Support for research and knowledge sharing is increasing. 
Irrigation control systems are being modernized. Adoption of advanced field techniques such as the drip irrigation and precision land leveling are saving water. More efficient transport, market infrastructure, and systems are helping to reduce food waste during distribution and boost farmers' income. And more efficient field-to-plate supply chains are being adopted to reduce losses of food after harvest. Perhaps in classrooms, especially in the advanced societies, we should more seriously teach our children the culture of not wasting food. ADB's work with Karnataka state government in the Krishna Basin is a good example. There, an inclusive approach is combating, uh, con uh, co combining participatory river basin planning and stronger policies with efforts to modernize irrigation canals. Farmers are learning water saving techniques and forming water user associations. Millions of cubic meters of water will be saved and used to irrigate additional land benefiting up to 1.5 million people. I'll now turn to the second area, nexus of water and energy. Water is needed for energy. The un anticipated dramatic escalation in our region's energy needs will squeeze already scarce water resources. At the same time, we must keep in mind that the energy is required for water too for such uses as water pumping and trip treatment. Hydroelectric is the most important source of water generator. Good practices in water management should be incorporated in hydro power projects. These good practices will ensure adequate flow to meet needs of downstream communities, prevent river bank erosion, and protect river basins. Contrary to the perception of many people, traditional thermal power plants also requires large quantity of water for cooling. ADB is investing in projects to improve water efficiency in generating thermal power. Existing power plants are being rehabilitated to capture cooling water, treat it, and reuse it. Plants in Bangladesh provides a good example. We must also consider energy for water in three key areas, agriculture, water utilities, and sanitation. In agriculture, the availability of low-cost pumps and poor irrigation services has led many farmers to increase their reliance on groundwater. This has increased crop production and farmers' income. But there are huge costs, most notably increasing energy demand for pumping and unsustainable rates of groundwater use. To combat these trends, ADB is encouraging sustainable groundwater use through improved irrigation technologies. In the case of utilities, the energy used for Pumping water makes up a large proportion of the cost of supplying municipal water. ADB is working with utilities to reduce water losses and also to introduce more energy efficiency motors. For example, ADB provided a grant to improve energy efficiency in Ho Chi Minh City water supply system by upgrading its pumps. In India, ADB approved multi-year loans amounting $400 million for replacing outdated pumps and pipe, pipes of Kolkata water supply system. For sanitation, ADB is working with the sovereign and private clients to improve the efficiency of water treatment pro process. But water treatment requires energy. 
Some 80% of the region's wastewater currently receives little or no treatment. This causes widespread pollution. Treated wastewater is a valuable resource for maintaining river flows and for industrial and agricultural use, but requires energy. Our work with a private enterprise in China provides an example of what can be done. Upgrading wastewater treatment plants will enable the reuse of 20% of China's wastewater by 2023. Let me now turn to my final topic, the importance of thinking differently about water security and its nexus with food and energy. I'll make three points on how to move forward. First, managing water resources independently by each sector must stop. As we will hear during the summit, different sectors have approached the water, food, energy nexus from their own perspectives. The lack of a coordinated approach has led to the difficult situation in which we find ourselves today. Second, inappropriate pricing water and energy or both provides perverse incentives. This has resulted in unrestricted growth in water demand, energy consumption, and efficient water use. A clear example is the unsustainable over-extraction of groundwater due to subsidized energy prices for pumping. This practice threatens agricultural sustainability on large tracts of land and also disrupts power supply to other users. These distortions must disappear. Third, we believe river basin organizations are key to resolving competition between using user uses, including most importantly, food and energy production. ADB is working with basin organizations to facilitate basin planning encourage collaborative water resource management, and develop human and institutional capacity to improve governance of water. French institutional management arrangements, better data and information, innovative technologies, and updated skill sets are being created. Through these actions, ADB is helping improve water security for over 400 million people in some 30 river basins. <clears throat> in, in concluding, I'd like to emphasize that business as usual will not achieve water, food, and energy security. We need to raise awareness that food wasted is water and energy wasted, and that water wasted is often energy wasted. We need to think differently about water and its uses for food and agriculture production and take action. Attaining energy, water, and food security for all is a difficult challenge. Many countries in the regions are or will soon be facing difficult decisions about how to ensure water, food, and energy security for their population. The challenges are about appropriate allocation, efficient use, investment for the future, and innovations. Overcoming these challenges will call for leadership from the highest level of governments and active part participation of the private sector and communities. Thank you very much.